we good? Are we live? We're live. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to our Pathway service this morning. We're going to get started with worship. Thank you for joining us online if you're watching from home. And thank you for uh, attending in person today. We love to see your faces and as much as your faces we can see but <laughs> and hear your voices. And, and uh, we just love having you here. So feel free to to come live to the service on Sunday mornings if you have, if you have the opportunity, because we love to have, have you all here. So would you stand with us this morning as we start worship today? Um, we are going to just sing about God's goodness and his faithfulness. We are in a month of thanksgiving and praise and just glorifying the Lord for the good things he's done. So we're going to sing how forever he is faithful. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, His love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever God is faithful. Forever God. To the setting sun, his love endures forever, and by the grace of God we will carry on. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Sing praise. For Good morning, Pathway. Good morning to everybody joining us. We are 
thrilled that you're all here and worshiping together and just have a, a few announcements before we uh, take up our, our offering and continue in our worship and celebration. On the 22nd of November, we will be taking up a designated offering for Samaritan's Purse. Okay, so 22 November, we'll be taking up a designated offering for Samaritan's Purse. So this is uh, the organization of the Billy Graham uh, Association that sends uh, these boxes right here worldwide to children in need. So uh, we are going to be uh, collecting up an offering for that express purpose. Uh, also, uh, well, I'd be remiss to miss the obvious. We have uh, Operation Christmas Child boxes for all of you who would like to uh, take uh, one, two, three, four, and fill them up and bring them back. They also need to be here by the 22nd of November. So we wanna make sure that we get those out in a timely fashion. So wonderful kids throughout the world can have a very, very special Christmas uh, this year. So we do want to uh, encourage you, uh, the right here in the foyer if you wanna pick them up. And if you, for one reason or another, uh, cannot come in to collect the box, this year you can build a box online. Just simply go to Samaritan's Purse, uh, Operation Christmas Child, go online there and you can fill out, or fill out the information to have them pack a box for you. Uh, very, very interested in making sure that everybody is connected in this time when it's so difficult to do that. So I just want to uh, emphasize that we have uh, available the uh, ability to make sure that you receive information like the latest on Operation Christmas Child, the latest on all of the different announcements that we have, all the religious ed programs that are going on, both in person and online, and some of them are, are blended. Uh, but uh, if you simply text the word CONNECT, C-O-N-N-E-C-T to 913-270-8008. And we will make sure that you receive all the slides, everything that we put out, you get uh, where you're at so you can know what's going on and be connected. And we would also encourage you through that same process, let us know how we can pray for you. Let us know how things are going for you because we do love you, we do care for you. Uh, so, uh, as we uh, conclude our announcements, I'd ask you all to join me in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have made. Thank you for the opportunity to know you, Lord. There is nothing more glorious in all creation than to know the God who made us. And you have revealed yourself perfectly through your word and through your Son, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you love us so, that you give us this opportunity to come together and to, to share with one another and to grow in your love and our love for one another. Father, we just ask that you would take this time, help us to set aside all our cares and concerns and to rightly lift you up, to give you the praise that you alone are worthy of. Lord, we ask that you would receive our offering and our tithes and bless it and multiply it for the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Um, we're going to continue with worship. If you guys want to stand. Um, you know, we, uh, we're coming here to lift up an offering of thanksgiving and praise. And, you know, chaos, confusion, trials, struggles, <laughs> All of these things, heartaches, hurts, disappointments, it is all a part of our life, um, all a part of the human experience in life. But Jesus said when he was talking to his disciples, he was saying, take heart because I have overcome the world. You're going to experience Amen. all of these things, but you, don't you worry. Joy is coming in the midst of grief. I will turn it into joy. And um, because the Holy Spirit was on its way, but they, they had no idea what he was talking about. They're so confused. But 
no matter what happens in life, no matter what we face, God is sovereign, and in it all, he is going to get the glory because that's what he does. He wins every time. He, yeah. is, the victor he is the victor. And um, so in the midst of all of that, our job is to keep our eyes focused on him, fixed on him, turned upward instead of out here, circumstances, what's going on, what are people saying, what is happening right now. Our job is to keep our eyes focused up here where he is doing so much more in the heavenly realm than he is right in front of our faces. And things that he's doing will come out and will, will be shown and, and we'll see the glory that he gets. So as we stand this morning and, and continue in worship, um, I just want to invite you to come with me to the throne room and if you're comfortable lifting your hands up and joining the saints and the angels that surround his throne and day and night, they say, holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and who is and who is to come, and they never get tired of it. And the incense bowls fill as we, as we lift our praises and our prayers to, to the Lord, and they begin to pour out the answers and the blessings as we continue to praise him and thank him in the midst of, of hard times, in the midst of the good times. But I tell you what, the hard times are what's going to draw you much closer to him. So join with us as we sing.
says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, you are the, my fortress, my refuge, my strong tower, the God in whom I trust. It says, he who dwells, that doesn't mean I'm just going to visit for a few minutes, camp out here for a couple of days. It means we dwell, we live, we live under that, under that shadow. You guys can keep playing. We live under that shadow, that, that dwelling place of the Lord, and that's where he protects us and he covers us and he keeps us. And when we dwell in there, there is nothing we can fear. And I don't know if you know the whole Psalm 91, but man, that is such a powerful message of protection and strength and power that God gives us when we dwell in his presence daily, constantly. It is, it's a continual thing. It's not just a Sunday morning thing. It's not just a Wednesday night Bible study thing. It is a daily thing that we keep ourselves in the presence of God, covered by him. He is so faithful. We're going to move on to our next song. Because it's great is his faithfulness.
praise God. You guys can be seated. Thanks. Amen. It's wonderful to be in that special moment where you can truly sense that God is with us and have that opportunity to praise him and thank him for who he is and all that he has done. I'd ask you all to to join me this morning as we enter into our time of prayer, knowing that there are many who are struggling, many who are hurting right now, many who are trying to find a way to figure out what's up and what makes sense. Too often we find ourselves reaching into our own strength and the strength of others, and we forget that it is to the Lord that we must turn. So join me in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for the assurance of your promise that where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in their midst. And Lord, we are thankful that you are here with us Lord, we know that there is no boundary for you. There is no limitation for the almighty God of all creation. And Lord, we are so thankful that no matter whether we are, are here or we are away or we are bound up in homes and prisons, Lord, that there is one thing that unites us, that you are with us. And we celebrate that we are all partakers in one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Lord, we just come before you this morning knowing that there are things in our lives that are displeasing to you, and Lord, we do confess to you our sins. Lord, when in pride and arrogance and selfishness, we act in our own best interest rather than in listening to your Holy Spirit and loving you and loving others. Where we fall short, Lord, forgive us. And Lord, equally so, place in our hearts a forgiving nature knowing that as we are so greatly forgiven by you, it is too petty of us to hold on to the little offenses that others have against us. Lord, we ask that your your spirit would move in us to remember those who are praying and hurting right now, Lord, who need a physical touch, healing, we just need to know that you are working and restoring. God, we do believe that there is a balm in Gilead and that you heal today. And Lord, for our friends who are suffering through cancer and various illnesses through COVID and Lord, all the uh, physical ailments that come in life, we ask for your presence and your healing power. Lord, we ask that you would be with our nation. Lord, help us to turn from our ways and to seek your face. Lord, we just ask for wisdom and wise counsel for our leaders. We pray for our military, remembering those who are far off. Comfort them and give strength to their families, we pray. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would be here with us now. Speak to our hearts. Move in us. 
Show us your way. To our great God and King be all glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning, Pathway. Last week, uh, we were in the midst of uh, what it means to give thanks to God in truly tough times. What does it look like to be thankful regardless of bad or good external circumstances? And we're going to continue to look at this in most important aspect of discipleship this morning, giving thanks. Oftentimes when we look at discipleship, Thanksgiving often isn't one of the things that we think of. But as we are going to learn, it is probably one of the most important barometers that we have in determining where we are in our walk with Christ. So we'll continue uh, to look into the heart of David in this 56th Psalm. And we learned that although David was hard pressed on every side, that he was fraught with fear, fear of death at the hands of Saul's men, or the Philistines to whom he had fled. David realized that regardless of his situation, God ever remains true. We learn that God is to be praised. Thanksgiving is to be lifted up because of who God is. David declares that God is gracious. He is trustworthy. God is just, God is tender-hearted. That God is for us. He is our deliverer. And God is the light of our lives. Now, I think those are wonderful reasons to be thankful no matter what we're feeling, no matter whether we are feeling like we're on top of the world or whether we're being squashed by the weight of it. We learned how tough Thanksgiving is likely the most profound and sincere because when circumstances cause every human and worldly capability to be overwhelmed, you know, when we find ourselves to be not enough, when we are completely abased, it is then that we are provided the opportunity to see what is real, what is eternal, what is all that matters. When we give thanks. Now, we talked about how the process of giving thanks connects us to God. Remember that portion in your brain that when you express gratitude, it shifts your perception. This week, we're going to continue to look at tough Thanksgiving through the 56th Psalm. And we'll focus on David's delight in praising and thanking God for his word giving thanks to God for all of his promises and the life-transforming dynamic of his word. And it's an essential part of the life of everyone who walks the path of Christ. The praise and thanksgiving of God's word gives us access to the reality of the majesty of God and fundamentally changes who we are. We get to know who God is. And when we know that, it changes us. Please pray with me. God, our Father, we thank you for your word. 
we join with our brother David in celebrating and praising you for your word. Holy Spirit, we pray that we would not just be hearers, but that we would receive and treasure in our hearts your word, Lord, and may we be doers of your word. And Father, as always, whether through me or in spite of me, I pray your word would reach its target. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's begin this morning by reading through the 56th Psalm. Those of you who have your Bibles, please join me. Those of you at home, please join me. Be gracious to me, O God. For man tramples on me all day long, an attacker oppresses me. My enemies trample on me all day long, for many attack me proudly. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God whose word I praise. In God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? All day long they injure my cause. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They stir up strife, they lurk, they watch my steps as they have waited for my life. For their crime will they escape. In wrath, cast down the peoples, O God. You have kept count of my tossings, put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? Then my enemies will turn back in the day when I call. This I know, that God is for me. In God, whose word I praise. In the Lord, whose word I praise. In God I trust. I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? I must perform my vows to you, O God. I will render thank offerings to you. For you have delivered my soul from death. Yes, my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. In David's desperate hour, his flesh cried out that there was nothing left in him. Nothing he had could prevent him from coming to a sudden and violent death. It was then that God spoke to his soul. Now, if I may take some liberty, I imagine that at the height of David's fatigue and at the peak of his fear, as David was scratching at the doors of the gates of the city of Gath, as he was feigning madness, God spoke to him. Remember me. Remember my promises. You will be king over Israel. In 1 Samuel 21, 10 through 15, David's actions are recorded how he was fleeing from Saul's army, knowing that the only way that he could avoid certain death was to run to the land of his enemies, the one place where Saul's army would not pursue him, but also the one place David had zero guarantee that they would not kill him themselves. So he's standing before the city gates David is renowned. This isn't some stranger walking up to the gates. This is one of the captains of Saul's army that killed Goliath, their champion, Goliath from Gath. And as the king's advisors are, hey, this is David. What a glorious opportunity we have. You know, the, the one that his own people sing, Saul killed his thousands, David's tens of thousands. 
And David is afraid. And in that moment of fear, the only thing he can think to do is to feign madness. He starts scratching at the, the, the gates to the city of Gath. And mumbling and muttering, ah. and God speaks to him, remember me, remember what I promised, you will be king over Israel. Interesting thing. The Hebrew word in 1 Samuel that is noted for David's madness, his insanity, is Hillel. And you might be thinking, okay, Chaplain, what does that have to, to say to us? Not a whole lot at the moment. David was feigning madness. But when he speaks in Psalm 56 of the same moment in his life, he speaks of Harel, which is praise and thanksgiving to God. The word we get hallelujah from. Hallelujah. So David is feigning madness. Ah, and God speaks to him. He could see it. In that moment, uh, <laughs> yes, yes. And David starts dancing with all of his might in front of the gates of Gath and starts praising God. But what is different, what is unique here is the king of Gath in no Holel from Hallel. He didn't know that this madman before him suddenly had a word from God that allowed him to praise the Lord with all of his being. How often do we find ourselves giving that kind of praise and thanksgiving to God to be completely spent, to be completely empty, and find that moment when God speaks the most profound truth into our lives that changes everything. There are times in my life where I'll get up and I'll yell, yes, usually during a football game. Shamefully, I rarely jump up and say hallelujah with the same level of integrity and, viv and vim and vigor. But that's the word that is used here. The same way that we would scream and shout and people are like, okay, this guy's cheese just slid off his cracker. When we are like that, that's the way we should be investing ourselves in giving thanks to God for all that he has done. That is the praise that we are to surrender to the God who made all things, who is our deliverer, our savior. I think if we could see the truth of how precarious the eternal nature of life is, where we stand, what we have been saved from, I think we would be like David when the ark was brought into the city. We would be dancing mightily with all of our might, thanking God for all that he has done. Do we fully know? Do we fully understand? Do we fully experience the promises of God? Let us then with confidence Draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace in time of need. Where are you at right now, Christian? Do you need his grace? Are you in a time of need? 
It's his word, his promise to you and to me. He will be there. He is here. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Philippians 4.13 We need to stand on his word, on his promises. When life spends you, takes everything from you, you can do all things through him who gives you strength. David must have remembered God's word to Abraham when Sarah laughed over God's promise of a son in their extreme old age. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Tell me, Christian, have you ever been in that moment where it just feels like, you know what, this, this is the one-off moment. I kind of feel like there's nothing out there that's going to help. I'm desperate. I don't know what to do. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Genesis 18, 14. But he certainly couldn't forget God's promise of deliverance to his people. The mighty act of deliverance at the Red Sea in Exodus 14. God's acts are not random. God's acts are not random. They are true to his word. Everything that God does is true to his word. It's the fulfillment of a promise. And we need to thank the Lord for that. Every day, every moment. I will walk among you and be your God. And you will be my people. Leviticus 26, 12. These are, these are promises David must have had repeated over and over and over. When he speaks of delighting in the law of God because of the wonderful promises of his word. Paul lets us know that with respect to God's word, that all of the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. 2 Corinthians 1.20. The promises of God, the might of and majesty of his word are all right here in the word. Can we, like David, let it burn in our hearts and bring us to a state of hallelujah? Admittedly, there have been times I have sat and read and read waiting for something without having a moment to say thank you God thank you for your word thank you for loving us so much that you revealed yourself to us that you have given us a plan of salvation, that you have shown us the way. Thank you for revealing to me what needs to change in my life, how I need to love others like you do. I need to do that every time. When the world around us is pressing in as it was with David. Can we put our trust in God? Can we put our trust in God and thank him for his promise, his promise to you and his promise to me? 
can the madness that consumes us be cast off by the overwhelming power of giving thanks and praise to God? We fret so much. We make mountains out of things that are nothing at all in comparison to God. They are nothing. And we make them the all-consuming madness of our life. And the outside world looks at us and thinks, they're at the end of the rope. They've got nothing left. And as I said last week, that's where God needs us to be. It's in that moment that we realize we had at our disposal everything we ever needed. That opportunity to say, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Greater are you. Let's listen to the second half of this psalm. You have kept count of my tossings, put my tears in your bottle. Uh, the crematory is a, uh, actually a place where bottles of tears are kept. Not a practice we observe in our current uh, culture. But when people grieved at the loss of somebody, they would save the tears. We are precious and dear to God. He knows our pain, our suffering. He keeps them, everyone, and he writes them down in his book. Then my enemies will turn back in the day when I call. This I know that God is for me. In God whose word I praise, and the Lord whose word I praise. In God I trust I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? I must perform my vows to you, O oh God. I will render thank offerings to you, for you have delivered my soul from death, yes, my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. Now, I believe that I can gain a general agreement that the word of God, his promises, are wonderful. But in truth, if I just read the word, it doesn't necessarily spur within me an automatic sense of gratitude. And really, that is not what the Lord wants. We, we aren't to pursue a superficial politeness with God. Expressing thanks for the good or kind act of another is, is just the first step in thanksgiving. But it, it's no more the complete expression of gratitude than warm fuzzies are is an expression of love. It's nice, but it's not the expression of the depth and height and width of a love. Thank you is not the complete story of giving thanks. Every one of us who have surrendered our lives to Christ have received his salvation and blessings. We find ourselves often thanking the Lord for our deliverance. Some of you have been delivered in truly profound and deep ways. Delivered from a life of destruction into a life that shares the light of Jesus. But I'm afraid that our thanksgiving is too often expressed only in those times when we perceive that goodness is everywhere. 
unlike the expression that David has here in the 56th Psalm, in times of mortal peril, emotional and mental exhaustion, abandonment and desperation, perhaps we too quickly forget the words of our brother Paul, written while he was in chains. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Philippians 4.16. Thanksgiving is one of the barometers of true Christian love. Christian love cannot be fully expressed unless it comes from a heart that has disciplined itself to be truly grateful. And I could spend the remainder of our time together highlighting the single most important reason for us to be thankful, and that is truly praise and thanksgiving directed at our Lord. There's nothing, nothing more worthy, no one more worthy of our praise and thanksgiving than the Lord our God. But God has given us something more than even our dear David had. He has not only given us the blessing of hiding his word in our hearts, just like David, but he has given us new life through his incarnate word, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And Jesus requires something more. He requires us to love each other. Christian, are you ready to live a transformed life? Do you want to know what it is to truly be thankful? I'm going to challenge each of you this week. Give praise and thanks to God. Love him for his word, his promise. But follow Jesus and give thanks for those who persecute you, to love your enemy. Change your heart towards them by thanking God for them. If they are oppressing you, thank God for them. Truly show the heart of Christ who suffered and died for us while we were his enemies. As our band comes up, I would ask you all to truly join with me this week. Hold on to that promise that God has given you. Every day, his promise that I and with you always is ever in my heart. And I thank him for it. But I also ask you, join with me in giving thanks to those situations that you might say in your flesh, I have no reason to be thankful about that. But you will find that you connect to them when you're thankful that God loves them and is working in their life and he has appointed you to be a ministering angel to them. Please pray with me. God, our Father, we thank you for your word. Your word that challenges our hearts to become more and more like, like you, Lord. Dear Jesus, we know you prayed for us while we were your enemy. Help us to give thanks for those who oppress us that you may be glorified and that we may be changed and conformed into your likeness. In Jesus' name, amen. As we sing the blessing and close out. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Lord turn.
Christmas.